Welcome back to another Good Good Labs video. In today's video, Garrett is gonna give us a little chipping lesson. He's very good at chipping, so he has a lot to offer for you guys. Before we get into this chipping lesson, huge shout out to you guys for all the support on the channel because, uh, I mean, since we've launched it, yeah. we've seen a lot of engagement, a lot of views, a lot of subscribers, so. Mm -hmm. But yeah, today we're just gonna be going over chipping. We're out here at uh, Ozark National here in Branson. Shout out to Big Cedar Lodge for having us out today. We're gonna get right into it. Basically, we're gonna start off here just hitting this close chip, like a super simple chip, and I kinda wanna watch all the good, good guys hit this chip one by one, get a feel for their chipping stroke, and see if there's anything that we need to change and kinda what they're doing. There's a few things about this chip. First, it's into the grain. Second, it's a very tight lie. Third, it's a very simple chip, and you should be able to get up and down almost every single time, so. Bubby's chipping, you've been talking about it's it. It's bad. I'm gonna, that's why I wanted to go first. I'll set the bar low, and then we can work our way up. Yeah. That's Pretty really good. not a bad motion. That's yeah. not terrible, but that leaves me a six footer. He got here and then he forced yeah. accelerated. I stab at it. Right. I really you just stab. You didn't keep just the tempo like a, the like same a, throughout. Like you don't want any forced acceleration. Right. No cool. jerking. There, Bobby. That was still good. That was Boom. really good. Okay, I understand it. You now. didn't. There you go. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's unreal. On the course, like any shot inside 50 yards, I kind of get here. Then I just stab at it. Right. Because yeah. I want to get to the ball. I don't like. Kind of scooped it. Yep. There's one thing that I was telling Steven in our chipping lesson, and it's for him to accelerate down and through the ball because he has a huge tendency of kind of scooping it, almost trying to help the ball up. And that's why he kind of heard ground first instead of ball. That was, that was a lot better. Good. Yeah. That's much better. Oh, sweet. Yeah, he across accelerated the throughout. See, right. you just yeah. gotta tell me one second and I remember. Yeah. I noticed with Matt on the course when he's chipping, he'll so he'll sometimes take a, a little bit too short of a backswing. So he'll only take it to here and then he'll kind of jerk and force at it a little bit. So I think if Matt took a little bit longer of a backswing, that would help him out so he doesn't have to force it. There you go. That was a lot better. Even still, there. though, there was a little bit of a jerk. I agree. He kind of jerked it just a tiny bit. Yes. Yeah, that was, that good. was good. Do it. Oh, oh. see that? Right. That's pretty solid. I, I definitely agree with that. I kind of jerk at it, but I like that lesson. That's good. Nice and fluid through. Typically, I don't chip with my 60 degree because I like to run it. I just, I hate my 60 because I always chunk it and then I always leave it short. So I like that lesson. Time to get some W's. Yeah, that was clean, Matt. All right, let's go, Tig. That was really good. That was good. Sometimes when Tig gets a little farther away, he almost comes over the top a little bit with his chips, which causes a lot of spin. It's almost as if he's slicing his chips a little bit. Right. Which I is agree. not what you want to do with pitching and chipping. If anything, you would almost want to hit the ball a little bit from the inside, if anything. Agreed. But Colin's getting in here in this Good Good Labs video. Everyone seems to have good chipping, but we need to kind of, we got to talk about somebody who's chipping might not be the greatest. That's definitely me. I feel like I actually, my pitching isn't the best form, but I feel more comfortable pitching than like this shot like right. I don't know how to sweep it I feel like I just kind of like so when chipping it's really easy to feel like you're almost having to help the ball up and Steven does it often where it's almost like he's trying to scoop it a little bit and that's a huge mistake that a lot of people make but for a shot like this standing over the ball weight on the left foot just a little bit and shaft leaning forward that's the one thing at impact I want to see that shaft leaning a little bit forward just a right. little bit if this is the handle Colin was kind of breaking down a little bit and scooping. That's why it was kind of going a little bit too high. We want to keep this handle moving a little bit ahead, moving through the ball. Right, you can put your feet there almost you go. touching together. Yeah. Weight left. Yep. Okay, weight left. Shaft. There. That was so much better. There oh, you go. almost made it. Thing is, you have a wedge, guys. You already naturally have a ton of loft in your hands. You don't have to help the ball up unless you're trying to hit a flop shot or a huge high pitch shot. One thing you guys gotta always know is everyone's form and the way they chip is gonna be a little bit different. There's right. no one way to chip a golf ball. There's only a few fundamentals that you need to have in order to hit good chips. And then whatever your stroke looks like after that, it's like it's not gonna all look the same. Phil's yeah. a little more handsy than other players. Right. You know, like he's more of a feel player. Right. It just depends on the kind of golfer you are. So for me, the first thing that I'm always thinking about with a chip like this is weight forward. If you have your weight on your back foot, you're not gonna be a consistent chipper of the golf ball. I can almost guarantee you that. Because I mean, yeah, leaning back, weight back, imagine trying to hit down on the ball. It's right, almost exactly. impossible. That's what I notice a lot of people, they have too wide of a stamp and their weight's back here and they flip at it. 
Right. So they hit those low scald shots and fat shots. So you gotta get those feet close together, weight left. That's the first checkpoint we gotta talk about. Right. Weight left, feet close together. Second checkpoint for me is finding the right ball position. For a chip like this, I'm gonna be just in front of my back foot. Not right here, not behind my back foot, but just in front. Last but not least, I want to feel like I have a little bit of forward shaft lean through impact. I really want you guys to focus on this left wrist here and how it moves through the impact zone. Garrett does not let this left wrist break down, but he keeps this left wrist moving. Right. You got you to pay attention to that. And now this is a personal thing. I think a lot of golfers also do this, but not everyone. I personally aim a lot to the left with my body and even my left foot. I open up this left foot to create some room through impact. Let's walk through all the checkpoints, guys. For me, when I'm over the ball, weight forward, ball just inside my right foot, shaft leaning forward just a tiny bit, and then the last checkpoint that I personally think about is feeling as if my body is a little bit open to create some room through impact. Right. You can tell for me I keep this left foot pointed outwards to create some extra room and feel as if my body is open through impact. Those four checkpoints are exactly what I would teach. And Garrett's obviously, he's very, very good at chipping, so that should help you out a ton. We need to talk a little bit about the leading edge and the bounce and the difference between the two. So for me personally, I like finding an in-between, but for everyone watching, just look at this logically. When the club is sitting down, if you turn the face down, you're using more of the leading edge. Right. If you're, if you don't have as much forward shaft lean, you come back, you're using more of the bounce, and it, even if you open up the face, you're using more of the bounce. Right. For people that are chipping out there, or for all the pros, they use way more of this bounce here than the leading edge because if you are to screw up a little bit and hit behind it, if you use the bounce properly, you'll slide. Yep. If you use the leading edge, you'll chunk a lot of chip. The last thing that I think about when I'm getting over a chip is assessing the lie. This goes into the leading edge and the bounce and how much you need to use of either or. So for me, when I'm over this ball, I can tell it's into the grain. And Grant, talk a little bit about the difference between into the grain and down grain. Right, so into the grain means that the grass is actually growing towards you. So this would be into the grain. See how there's resistance here? When you're to drag the club, there's a little bit of resistance. This is down grain because the grass is growing this way. So naturally, the club is gonna wanna slide a lot easier when it's down grain versus into the grain, it's going to dig. Like Garrett said, if you're into the grain, you wanna focus on using the bounce a lot more than if you were to be down grain. Nice. Guys, that is the form that you wanna copy at your house. That is perfect. You can use these points, but you need to get out here on your own and practice them because Garrett spent a ton of time hitting those trick shots and that's what's made him a really good chipper. I spent tons of time and tons of hours just chipping around the greens here right. and building that muscle memory. Well guys, if you do like these videos, you should hit that subscribe button because this is free golf instruction and not many places in the world you will find that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this Good Good Labs video. If you did, stay tuned for more content two times a week uploads. Till next time, guys. Peace out. Peace out.